All right, so in this video, we're gonna learn how to work with Svelte components. Up to this point, we've mostly been working out of one component, our index.svelte file. But typically, a Svelte project, or really any modern web dev project, will consist of multiple components. For instance, we'll have multiple pages, which are types of components, and we might have a header, a footer, a dropdown, the list goes on. We would then combine these components in a tree-like structure to compose our application. At the top of this tree, we have our parent component, which is the current page. If we take a look at this diagram, we see our parent component is the home page, and within our page, we have child components. So we might import a header, a footer, and an article component. These child components can have their own child components, and so on. So our application is built out of all these different components and pages that form a tree-like structure. Now, I want to make a clear distinction between pages and components. All pages are components, but not all components are pages. For instance, we've been working out of this index.svelte component, which is a page component, meaning it corresponds to a specific route that we can navigate to in our browser. Components that define pages or a layout, such as our index page, can import and use child components, but they themselves cannot be imported as a child. So for instance, our index.svelte page can import components such as we're doing here with our grid tile component, but our grid tile.svelte file cannot import our index.svelte page. If we attempt to do so, we see we get an error. So one more time, just to really drill this into your head, pages can never be imported by another page or component. So let's get into how we create svelte components. Any file that ends with .svelte is a svelte component. If this file lives in the routes directory, it will be a page, meaning it has a corresponding route that we can navigate to in our browser. If the file lives in our lib directory, it's just a basic Svelte component. Now let's look at the structure of a .svelte file. At this point, we've already been working out of a Svelte component, so it should look pretty familiar. A .svelte file is a superset of HTML, so just like an HTML file, it has a script tag where we put all of our logic. The file can also contain HTML, as well as a style tag for CSS. I went over CSS two videos ago and how to install Tailwind in our last video, so we'll just be using Tailwind from here on out. Now, if you're not too familiar with component-driven development, components are reusable blocks of code that encapsulate HTML, CSS, and JavaScript in a single file. This allows us to easily reuse the same chunk of code as many times as we want without rewriting it. It also keeps our JavaScript and CSS scoped to that specific component. For example, we see our grid tile component displayed in our browser and everything needed to build this component is bundled in a single reusable file. To use this component, we simply import it in the parent script tag and we can use it in our HTML like this. Now, since components are reusable, I can add this as many times as I want. So you can see how convenient this is. Instead of copying and pasting all the code needed to make this component, you only need to add one additional tag to your HTML. Now, in our index page, let's declare a variable products, which is a list of product objects, each containing a name, SRC, and price. We can use an each block to iterate through this list and display a grid tile for each item. The problem here is that all of the info being displayed in our component is hard-coded, which is why we see the same image, name, and cost for each one. Just like CSS, logic is also scoped to the component. So if we move into our grid tile component and try to log products, we'll see it throws an error that products is not defined. So what if we want to use the value of each product in our grid tile component? We can do this using properties. Props give us a way to set data in child components from the parent. So to do this, we first need to export products from our grid tile component like this. This will expose a variable to the parent from the child where we can then assign its value. So in our parent component, we can add product as a param to our grid tile component and assign its value to product like this. Now that we're passing the value for each product into our grid tile component as a parameter, we can see we're no longer getting an error and the value of each product is logged in our component. Now let's update the title, SRC, and cost to use the values passed in with our prop. Now in our browser, we see the values of each product in our array displayed on the page. Anytime product changes in the parent, it will also update in our child component. To prove this, let's head back into our parent component and add a button that will call an update cost function, which will change the cost of the first item in our array. 
Now, if we click this button, when the value of the price changes in the parent, the child component is updated as well. Now, in this situation, for each grid tile component on our page, we are assigning a value to our prop product. But what would happen if we used a grid tile component and did not assign a value to our prop? Let's test this out. I'll add another grid tile tag, this time without defining our prop product. Now, we see we're being thrown an error. We can fix this by giving our prop a default value. This way, if the parent component does not set the value, it will default to whatever we set in the child component. So let's move back into our grid tile component and give our property product a default value. Now, if we scroll down, we see our grid tile is displaying the default values since the prop is not being set by the parent. One last thing, here the property name product and the value it's being set to in the parent, also product, have the same name. Because of this, we can use a shorthand. So instead of saying product equals product, we can simply say product in single curly braces. Okay, so now we understand how to pass data from a parent component to a child, but what if we want to pass it the opposite direction, from a child to parent? We'll learn how to do this in the next video.